Malachi Corley is the next Debo Samuel in the NFL. But just how much dynasty value does he have? All that and more in this episode of the Lot On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can check her out on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Behind the Steel Curtain and Pro Football Focus. On today's show, we are looking at Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley. We're going to discuss uh, his tape, some of the analytics that are really, really fun. And then at the end of the show, we'll discuss his dynasty value, his best comp in the NFL, which I think everybody probably knows by now and then kind of where we're ranking him. But Kate, let's start with the prospect in the tape. What did you see for Balakai Corley when you turn on the tape? He's one of the most fun wide receivers to watch in this draft class, like point blank period, just an absolute monster. He is dubbed the yak King for a reason. Fourth year player out of Western Kentucky is a, you know, a little bit on the smaller side in terms of height, five eleven, but Built like a tank, 215 pounds, 81st percentile for wide receivers, which is very close to the aforementioned Debo Samuel coming out. Uh, but had a really stellar, stellar 22 season. Um, and then followed that up with another great year in 2023. Now, he earned his nickname as the Yak King for an absolute reason, Marcus. I mean... Yards after the catch, 9.2 yards after the catch per reception over the past two seasons. That ranked seventh among 356 qualifying wide receivers. Third most missed forced tackles on receptions in that span. Most receiving yards after contact in that span. There is nothing that he really can't do when the ball is in his hands, which makes him such an exciting prospect. You can generate touches for a Malachi Corley. You want to get the ball in his hands, see what he does after now that skill set obviously translates so well because we've just seen the immense success that Debo Samuel has had in the NFL as this diverse weapon can be used in motion. Um, but I will say for as much as, as he, you know, gives in terms of yards after the catch, you know, a, a relatively low average depth, of target, a lot of, of screens, a lot of, you know, the types of targets that he's going to need to prove he could do a little bit more down the field, I think, at the next level. But so much to like here about Malachi Corley. Yeah, I mean, his game is yak. Like, that's this is where he wins, right? He, he catches screens, he catches slants, he catches bubble screens. And not only can he just run away from uh, defenders, but he'll run through them. Uh, he posted this great vid uh, video of him literally trucking a defender and then running 50 yards for a touchdown. Like he is the best receiver that I've seen after the catch in a long time. I think, I mean, he's better than Debo Samuel after the catch coming out of college. Uh, Debo played at South Carolina. One of the things that's really interesting about Malachi is that he's relatively new to the wide receiver position. When he was in high school, he was a quarterback. Uh, he was actually recruited to Western Kentucky as a cornerback was a returner. And then he made the switch over to wide receiver. And then you mentioned the stats, like just bonkers stats, especially after the catch. So that shows up in his game. Like he's not a super refined route runner and we'll get to his strengths and weaknesses in a little bit, just relatively new when it comes to, to playing the wide receiver position. Does that scare you? No, because I do think a lot of the skills that he has pulled from playing these other positions, and I'll say like almost kind of reminds me of that jack of all trades, master of none. But I do think that all of those traits that he pulls that made him successful at these other positions, the field vision, etc., that's what makes him really successful after the catch. It's 
the field vision, he has great lower body play strength that I, I think really helps yards after the catch because it's not just yards after the catch, it's yards after contact. I mean, that's the big this, one. Yeah. He can absolutely drag opposing defenders in a way that does truly remind you of a running back with that type of lower body strength. There's a lot to work out in terms of his overall refinement at the position, but I think from a physical traits perspective, bar none. And again, that that sort of vision and it, like innate sense of where to go with the ball and when, I think that's a skill that like is kind of hard to teach, right? Like I, I think he mm -hmm. just has a really natural feel for where to go with the ball and when once it's in his hands. And I mean, you know, again, very, very productive, especially over the past two seasons. Uh, saw a little bit of a, a dip in that overall production. But, you know, generally speaking, you're going to be very happy with the the profile, I think, considering the fact that he is relatively new to the position in four seasons at Western Kentucky, including the COVID year, um, 259 receptions, three, just over 3000 receiving yards. 29 touchdowns. And again, I, I just think the, the tools are there. And, you know, we talk about Debo Samuel as a comp Debo Samuel is kind of, I, I think, given teams, the blueprint, uh, you yeah. know, the Kyle Shanahan has shown teams how they can use a player like this and play to their strengths. So like all things considered, I I'm not concerned with Corley at all. I think, in the right system, I think he'd be a great fit for a team with, you know, uh, using a lot of motion. Um, and there are a lot of teams that are, you know, making that a center point of their game right now. So, yeah, I again, not not a ton to to dislike about Corley. We've talked a lot about these these strengths and weaknesses, but yes, raw is a route runner. Um, ball security can be an issue. He had six drops in the 2023 season, and for as much as I mentioned that lower body strength with that, I think that's the pinnacle of Corley's game. I do think one of his biggest weaknesses is the upper body strength. He's not mm -hmm. a contested catch guy, but like the good thing is he, he doesn't really need to be right. Like if you're using him more as an underneath player, I, I don't think he's going to translate to a guy that you're going to put as an X wide receiver. He's going to beat press coverage. You're going to target him deep down the field. He's a guy that you're going to generate touches for probably closer to the line of scrimmage and let him win with the ball in his hand. So like the fact that he's not a contested catch guy, that doesn't bother me. Cause again, that's he's not, not going to win that way. Yep. Exactly. Where his, he's going to be the guy that you play in the slot. You get him the easy throws, right? Yep. The slants, the bubble screens, the jet motions, the little tosses that uh, where the quarterback barely touches the ball, right? Like those are the kind of touches you want to get him because they're easy. They're easy to manufacture and they can have, they can spark your offense because he is so good with the ball in his hands. I, I see him as not as like a number one receiver, but as like a number two weapon on your team mm -hmm. where he's playing in the slot. He's in the backfield. Oh, now he's lined up behind the tight end. Okay. Now he's on punt returns. Now he's on kick returns. He is somebody that you just want to try to get 12 to 13 touches a game because he can handle it. He's not a 190 pounds and you're worried about him breaking down. He's 207 pounds and he continues to pack on the muscle. If you saw him at the senior bowl, just absolutely shredded. I think he is one of the more interesting players in this class. And I think a lot of teams that use, let's say the Shanahan style of offense, whether that's Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniel, Bobby Slowick, those type of teams are absolutely going to love having a weapon like this in his, in their offense, because there's just not many guys out there, Kate, that are like this, that can actually make guys miss, handle contact, run between the tackles. Uh, he's a pretty rare player. We'll see how the NFL values him in the draft. I've seen him slip a little bit on the consensus board down to, you know, low 50s-ish range. But I want to talk about some of the uh, more advanced analytics here with Malachi Corley. What does the breakout age look like? What does the dominator age look like? Just how special was he after the catch? We will get up to all of that next. 
This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and in the NHL. We've got baseball in full swing. We've got the Masters that are going on right now. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Lockdown Dynasty Football Podcast. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. All right, Kate, let's dive into the advanced stats with Malachi Corley. What do we got? I want to be honest. There's not a ton of surprises here when you look at the advanced metrics for Malachi Corley. You know, receiving grade, kind of middle of the pack over the past two seasons, 65th percentile for wide receivers. Separation percentage, uh, 96th percentile. I will say, you know, it that's a stat that means a little bit less to me for Corley than it might be a guy that's running some deeper routes down the field, being targeted deeper down the field. That's a usage thing because he's just, he's getting separation on the bubble screen and stuff. So yeah, like we can kind of throw that one out a little bit. Yeah. Yards per route run 83rd percentile at yards after the catch for reception. That's the kicker 98th percentile for wide receivers over that span. And I mean, you know, I think generally speaking, what you're you're seeing here, fifth percentile in terms of contested catch percentage in that span, second percentile in average depth of target. And I'm going to be honest, Marcus, you look at what Debo Samuel has done um, in terms of like his A dot, and you've kind of seen that that usage in particular with Debo Samuel as well, like all of the skills that you see translating very well in the football field are I think pretty well matched with what the advanced analytics say the, the tape and the advanced metrics pretty well married in the case of Malachi Corley. A couple other things I just wanted to mention 2,100 career yards after the catch 2,100 Roman Wilson, who we talked about earlier this week, has like 1,700 career yards. Not yards after the catch, but career yards. Malachi Corley is so stinking good after the catch, and that plays out. I think there's only one receiver over the last two years that has more yards after the catch uh, per aver- or you know per reception than Malachi Corley, and I believe it's Brock Bowers, if you're including tight ends, which is pretty incredible. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple other things I just wanted to note. 91.6% of his snaps came from the slot. He doesn't project as an outside receiver. He's a slot receiver only, but that's not a big deal. We, I think any NFL team that is drafting him is okay with that. Uh, we're going to talk about some comps later at the end of the show that aren't just Debo Samuel, because believe it or not, there's some other ones out there. 75.7% of his catches came within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Now, I think that's partially due to the fact that he's just not a polished route runner yet. Like that's the way that they got him the ball. I also think that's a little bit of a quarterback stat. I don't know if Western Kentucky had the type of quarterback that could throw somebody like Malachi Corley open down the middle of the field. Uh, just something to to keep in mind when projecting him to the NFL. Yeah, relatively untested in that regard. And that's not to say that that can't be an aspect of his game, but it's also hard to work on that, right? As a collegiate prospect, it, it's difficult to work on that if that's not the way you're going to be used here within your respective offense. And I mean, I think it's it's kind of simple. Like again, with the way that we've seen, you know, generation or, or generated touches. Think of like. Curtis Samuel, uh, uh, Debo Sam, all the Samuels, I guess, um, <laughs> apparently. But like we've seen 
these guys come in and be able to utilize be utilized as a true weapon and not just pigeonhole them into this wide receiver role, which gives any creative offensive coordinator just a wealth of of potential play options in their playbook that you can design specifically for a guy like Corley, Corley in his skill set. How concerned are you about him getting pigeonholed as only a gadget receiver? And, and this is going to factor into his dynasty value a little bit, but, but basically being like Wandale Robinson where, okay, we're going to give you a couple of touches here and there again, but you're not really a focal point of our offense. See, I have a lot less concern about that because of his size, right? Like he can be a gimmicky guy if you want to utilize him in that way. But I also think his lower body play strength and his overall size and stature is going to give you a little bit more leeway than you might have with a, a smaller slot receiver. Like when we say he's a slot receiver, I think he definitely – profiles is more of like that power slot where he's going to use yeah. size and strength a lot more than, you know, a Hunter Renfro who's going to win with route running and precision. Correct. Like yes. that, that is, you know, we can say slot receiver, but I think it's definitely, you know, important to distinguish the difference between a Malachi Corley and a Hunter Renfro because they win in very different ways. So the the fact that he has that size and is able to win with the power and strength, that's a big difference for me. Yeah. Uh, I wanted just to give some quick background information about his athletic testing uh, from this offseason because from everything that I've been told, he was going to have a huge combine. Uh, but the day before the combine, actually, I think it was the day he, he checked into the combine. They had the medical screenings. Uh, he tested positive for COVID-19 wasn't able to do anything. They actually sent him home from Indianapolis. So missed out on the entire combine. Then they have the Western Kentucky pro day late, late March, one of the latest pro days and it's raining and there's 48 mile an hour winds when he's doing his pro day testing. So we didn't get a three cone because it was just the weather conditions were so poor that they just didn't want to be out there any longer. No vertical, no broad jump. Wait a minute. We Is it uh, like, Commonplace. I I feel like I always see pro days indoors. How common is yeah. it to do pro days outdoors? Oh, uh, it's fairly common. I mean, at Western Kentucky, they just don't have like an indoor facility like some of the other bigger Ooh. schools do. Okay. Um, so he ran two forties. Uh, one was with the wind. Yeah, remember we're talking about like forty-five plus mile an hour winds, and that was a four-four-six. And then his second one, which was against the wind because they had some swirling winds, was like a four-six-two, uh, or sorry, four-six-four. And what scouts did, rather than giving him the fastest time or the slowest time, they kind of split the difference. And that's why you're seeing a four, five, six, 40 yard dash pop up in his RAS score. So I think he's much faster than what that score or what that time indicates. But just wanted to give a little bit uh, of some background info when it comes to his overall athletic uh, numbers. Very insightful. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's talk about his dynasty value, Kate, because. It's a little bit all over the place. It, it, same with his draft value. I've seen him as, you know, some people have him as a top 40 receiver. Some play, people are top 40 player in this class. Some people even have him outside of their top 100 players in the class. What should you do with Malachi Corley in your dynasty leagues? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's the winning formula for winning championships, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing Malachi Corley's dynasty value and some player comps. Okay, where is he being drafted right now among wide receivers? 
Overall, in Dynasty Startups, he is being drafted as wide receiver 76, and that is uh, behind a lot of the second-tier wide receivers that we've seen in this class, including Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, uh, Ricky Pearsall, who we're going to talk about on tomorrow's show, uh, Devontae Walker, Jalen Polk. Like Malachi Corley, I'm very surprised for the production and the very unique skill set projected draft capital that we're expecting for Corley, even though, like you mentioned, like consensus boards might be dipping a little bit, some inconsistencies in his overall ranking, depending on who you're, you're sourcing from. But like, generally speaking for this skill set, I'm all in on this value at wide receiver 76. I mean, like, it, obviously I, I think draft capital could be huge for him. I think Landing spot could be huge. Like if he lands in an offense, like say um, that, that, you know, maybe a Shanahan kind of branch offense, like the Miami dolphins, I think would be a, a fantastic fit would shoot up draft boards. I think Malachi Corley here pretty underrated. And you know what, generally speaking, Marcus, I'm going to say that speaks to what we've seen probably for the entire career of Debo Samuel. I think just a generally, underrated dynasty asset. And I think a lot of that skepticism comes from the play style, the usage and, and, you know, I, I think having overall durability concerns, but he's shown no signs of, of those concerns at this point. So. Yeah. I, I want to give a, a player comp. That's not Debo Samuel. Cause that's the most yeah. common one. Uh, if he hits a ceiling, I think he can be 90% of Debo Samuel. He's not the nat as natural of a receiver or route runner as Debo was coming out of the SEC. So I think that's up that's a pretty high-end comp. Yep. But one comp I think that is very realistic for him is Randall Cobb. If you go back and look at Ooh. Randall Cobb as a prospect coming out of Kentucky, he was a wildcat quarterback who sp- played a little bit of receiver his final year. The Packers drafted him with the last pick of the second round early on in his career was really only a returner and then occasionally played in the slot. As he kind of progressed as a receiver, he became the primary slot receiver. He became somebody that they played in the backfield quite a bit, even just gave him regular handoffs. I think Malachi Corley could follow a similar career path as Randall Cobb. They've got similar bodies. They win in similar ways. They're not the most, polished route runners, but I think they can get there. I think Randall Cobb is a more likely outcome than Debo Samuel to me. I think that seems uh, pretty reasonable. And generally speaking, I do think like landing spot, again, going to be key for having a creative enough offense that you understand how to utilize Malachi Corley is going to be huge. Like Steelers have been a team that have been connected to Malachi Corley um, a lot of interest there. Had him in for a pre-draft visit. And you know what? Like, if he lands with the Steelers, probably going to be out on Malachi. Corley, I'll be out as I, well. Yeah. I don't Hunter's think Smith. you need a team that I think has creativity and play calling. Now, with the, the you know, rushing interest there with the Steelers, maybe you get some, some generated touches in that regard for a guy like Corley. But I think what you're really hoping for is, you know, more of a dynamic landing spot, a team that's going to end up using, uh, you know, some motion and, and, you know, like the the Dolphins, for instance, Uh, the Chiefs, Rams, all teams that ranked top, uh, you know, top five in terms of uh, targets on on plays with pre-snap motion, like, that's where I, I want to see him go because, you know, I, I think you're going to be able to generate more space for Corley. Yep. Um, and again, just utilize that, that yards after the catch ability, utilize that lower body strength and the ceiling could be high. Um, I, I will say also, I think the floor could be very low. For yeah. He, Corley. as much as I love Malachi Corley, I, I'm very much waiting to see what happens to him and where he lands in the NFL draft. I would love to, for him to get with an innovative offensive coordinator that knows how to use this type of player, or at least has some experience using this type of player in the past. So, cause I, I could also see him going to, you know, other teams that just desperately need wide receiver help. Like he, let's say he ends up in Jacksonville, right? Like I don't love that spot, even though they have 
a Trevor Lawrence at quarterback and they've got other weapons really hoping he learn he lands with one of these teams that is willing to kind of build their offense around this type of player. We'll see. I, I, I think we're going to learn a lot about Malachi Corley and his dynasty value uh, in two weeks. I think that that's is a great it. point, yeah, go Marcus. I yeah. like going to an offense that's going to uh, maybe build some plays in the playbook around him and not necessarily asking him to fit the playbook. I think Keep that's going to be the best case scenario for Corley to succeed at the next level is having a play caller that's willing to do that and not having the rigidness to ask Corley to fit their scheme, kind of the way that the Ravens, uh, you know, built their their new look offense around mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson. Like it, you, you totally shifted the landscape. Obviously, that's different because it's a quarterback, but sure, sure. similar quarter sort of uh, you know thing that I think could be a, a tremendous benefit to Corley in the right landing spot. Like I'm afraid that he's going to go to like Philadelphia, who happens to have two second round picks and they need a slot receiver. Like in theory, that should be a good spot. But I don't really trust Nick Sirianni and Kellen Moore to kind of build their offense around him. Uh, so let's let's hope that he lands in a favorable landing spot uh, in the next two weeks. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first list, listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, we're going to break down Ricky Pearsall, somebody who really is rising up the consensus board ranks. Cannot wait to talk about him. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Check us out on YouTube as well. You can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.